sets sail and turns one and two as the green flag waves here at Dover, Delaware. Johnson and Ryan Newman stand on the racetrack. They have tires that are 44 laps older than the guys that just came on pit road a moment ago. Why would they stay out? Well, I don't know. That's just, uh, to me, that's a big gamble for this 48 team because there's going to be a point in this race where we go green, a good section of the race, and this could be the time they could get this 48 car down if he has to come on pit road under green. Yeah, you think you don't want to be back in all of this. Maybe it's one reason with they would be, but you're right. I think that's a huge gamble. Carl Edwards just got right side tires whenever he came in. So that's another little different strategy, but we got people on all types of different strategies here. It's going to really be interesting to see how this plays out. You know, some point in time, we usually get a pretty long green flag run, Andy, and that could jump up and uh, bite a few people here. Looks like this could, you know, this could be if it strings out. These cautions have been coming when they're bunched up. They get strung out right here. The chances of having that caution are less and less. Jimmy Johnson is our leader. Ryan Newman is in second spot. Dave Blaney, this is where he had his best run of the year back in. He's back in third in the 22 car. And how about the 84 car of A.J. Allmendinger? He said up there in fourth spot. And here comes Jeff Gordon behind him. Jeff Gordon in the 24 car trying to get this car dialed back in. He made wholesale changes with the rubber and adjustments on the car to get it where it would turn. Let's listen into his radio. It's an absolute joke back here. Oh, we're going to be, we're going to be, everybody is back there. So if it's good back there, he's going to be really bad when he gets up front. <laughs> Not good back here, I can tell you that. No, no, I'm with you. That's what I mean. You watch everybody, it's just like a street fight back there. He got to have a little fun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's talking about his car back in traffic, got back there where he hadn't been really all day in that much traffic, just changes the, the total characteristic of the car. You lose a lot of the front end of that downforce on the front end, and it makes it, you think you're driving, you've gotten in something different. And then you got to deal with all these other guys that are like <laughs> all over the place. I think that's what he's talking about. It's just so, you know, everybody's racing so hard back there. Behind him is Juan Pablo Montoya in sixth position, having a good run as a, uh, Gordon gets underneath Almondinger to take the spot away. Shannon? Yeah, for Juan Pablo Montoya, this is only the second time this car has raced. The first time was at the Brickyard earlier this year. He's been fighting tight conditions all race. Of course, he stayed out on that last pit stop on lap 188. But guys, Juan Pablo Montoya is celebrating a birthday this week. He turned 33 yesterday. He's been in a really good mood all week, and this run is certainly adding to that mood. Yeah, 33 years old. I don't know how you can get up in the morning now that he's yeah, 33. I don't, yeah, I was going to say if I was 33, I'd be celebrating too. <laughs> Montoya having a great race today. He pitted the same time as Jeff Gordon. It's lap 173. No, lap 159. I'm sorry. Heard that radio a moment ago. Jeff Gordon was talking about the dog fight back there. Look at this gaggle of cars. Oh, my. Junior trying to hang on right in front of the eight car of uh, Mark Martin. Wow. What did he call it? A street fight? <laughs> At the very least. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Still there. Still there. There's there a jab. Still there. The 15 at your bumper. Still there. Yeah. Junior had to Still get there. out of the gas there. He got loose out of Still turn four. There. Mark Martin got into the back of him. See Montoya going by A.J. Allmendinger here to take over uh, that fifth spot. Yeah, Allmendinger last pitted on lap 159. Montoya actually at 173 with Jeff Gordon. I'm not sure what A.J. Allmendinger is going to do in 2009, but wherever he is, they've got a driver who has driven, who's got a lot of talent and a tremendous amount of potential. Gordon is uh, in the fourth spot. Montoya fifth. Allmendinger sixth. David Rudiman continuing the resurgence of Michael Waltrip racing here the last four or five races. David coming off back-to-back -back top ten finishes at Richmond, where it all began with a ninth-place finish. They're having another solid day. David doing a good job of just taking what the racetrack will give him right now, what his car is good for, making adjustments on it. You can see him move in on the uh, 84 of Almendinger right here. Try to get another spot closer to the front. Everybody's got pretty much single file here now. The things have calmed down a little bit. You see the two tires with on Carl Edwards there. He's been able to stay in front of Matt Kenseth, who has four tires. Yeah, this whole... This whole tire thing is really, you know, you got Jeff or you got Jimmy Johnson running up front. He's got 55 laps on his tires and he's still running good. How about the 38 car? David Gillen, who had the great qualifying effort, qualified seventh for Yates Racing. Holding his position up there in ninth spot. Yeah. 
Back up front, the 48 car, remember, stayed on the racetrack, and uh, so did Ryan Newman. They're holding first and second, but they have given up some 44 laps in terms of fresher tires to the guys that are trying to run them down. So, Doc, we've got the calculators smoking down here, and we're just trying to figure out what's in this for the 48. And this would appear to be one of those situations where they're just hoping to stay out for about 20 laps, 25 laps, just long enough to make these other guys go halfway through a fuel run or so, maybe, and have a caution come out, and then everybody have to pit. Now they've got track position in front of everybody, and they get back on even tires. That's a big gamble. It is a big gamble, Alan. What I really think is going on in Brad is I think they're just tired of getting back there, wrestling with everybody. They just want to get away from these cats, get some clean air, and get away. I call it get out of Dodge. Yeah. I mean, you heard Jeff Gordon's crew chief talking about their beating and banging back there. Jimmy Johnson's not doing that now. Yeah, and I, you heard DJ make a great point. These cars are getting spread out, so we're looking for a long green flag run right here. So that could come back and bite this 48 team. I know they're hoping for that car or looking for that caution to give themselves an opportunity, but these cars are spreading out pretty significantly here. They could be riding for a while. So Andy, if I'm if I'm figuring the, the number of laps they've run under caution and all that kind of thing, we're probably looking at these guys being able to run till about lap what, 235 or so before they'd have to, to come down pit road. I, I, it might be a little unfair of me to jump you on that, but if you get, get your, your calculator smoked, too, but I think it's about 235, 240. So if these guys can run another 20 laps or so and then have a caution fall their way, that's great. But if not, I agree with you. That's an awfully big gamble with where they are in the championship. Yeah, that win is too narrow for me, Alan. And yeah, you're right. It's about 235 before they'll have to pit. And that's kind of optimistic. You know, these guys have to count on a lot of these caution laps to extend that. But, uh, you yeah, know, this might work out great for them, but it sure could backfire. Jimmy Johnson again pitted on lap 145. Jeff Gordon, you see his fuel there. He pitted on lap 173. And Carl Edwards, a 99 car, uh, among those that came on pit road in lap 189. Kyle Busch has gone to the garage area, and Jamie is with him. Well, they continue looking at that car right now. Kyle, what was your first indication something was wrong? I can't hear you, but um, something broke inside the engine. Not sure what it is. Uh, I guess they're trying to see what they can do to look at it to fix it, but. Um, oh well. At this point, looking at the chase, is there a possible chance you guys can rebound, Kyle? At this point, it doesn't matter. Same thing happened two years ago. Exact same thing. Wrecked it loud and blew up here. So, where'd we end up? Dead last. Well, Kyle, they're still looking at your car and they're optimistic you could get back out there. Do you think there's any chance? It, it doesn't mean, uh, there's no point really because you get back out there and you're only going to make laps and be in everybody's way. and possibly still finish 43rd. All right, guys, they told me it was something wrong. The valves are broken. They're trying to find out what else is broken if they could get back out there and salvage some laps. That could uh, produce a 43rd place finish today, Jamie. Yeah, backing up a 40th place finish or 34th place finish a week ago. And that would mean that uh, Kyle Busch will be all the way at the bottom of the 12 chasers. Here are the top six right now. Jimmy Johnson, who came in as the co-leader. And there's the bottom six. Uh, you see guys that are gaining spots. Earnhardt Jr. back sixth position, and Kyle Busch uh, goes back from eighth to twelfth position. Jimmy Johnson knows what it feels like to be successful at Dover, Delaware. He's a three-time winner, including this race here back in 2005. Working lap 217 here at the Camping World RV 400 at uh, Dover International Speedway, Jimmy Johnson is our leader. He is the fourth leader today. We've had three different lead changes, eight cautions for 34 laps. We asked you earlier in the day, our AT&T Crew Chief Challenge, which past winner at Dover would get another win today? Would it be A, Jeff Gordon, B, Carl Edwards? Uh, it won't be C, Kyle Busch, although we asked you before he headed to the garage area. And D, Greg Biffle, uh, how did you vote? Carl Edwards, not a bad pick. And uh, Gordon gets some love, Biffle gets some love. Yeah, Carl Edwards is, uh, the last few laps, been one of the fastest race cars on the track, so that might be a pretty good choice. Those that voted for Kyle Busch may have been at the refrigerator when that happened a moment ago. Oh boy, a little close, close one there with the 42 and 44. Sam Hornish, by the way, has gone to the garage area after having a couple incidents and losing some sheet metal. We've seen Jamie McMurray on and off the racetrack a few times. He's been out of the garage. He's not up to speed yet. He's back down pit road. Carl Edwards, a 99 car. That's Montoya Edwards and Rudeman you were watching a moment ago. 
and the 11 car they're talking about the rear end grease leaking out of the back of Denny Hamlin's car he gets passed by the 16 for 10th position. Yeah, there have been a few reports of some guys that were behind the 11 car that uh, they're maybe getting some uh, fluids on their windshield. Be interesting to see just how long that uh, might last. Greg Let's Biffle. Listen. Yeah, Greg Biffle was just behind the 11 car, and I think he said something on his radio about it. Somebody's leaking oil. Oil on my window. Everybody's talking about debris right here. Just take it easy here. I'm looking. Just talking about the 99 smoking out in front of you here. Just being careful. No pressure here, but just maintain. Can't be fun to sell this thing off in a corner, DJ, at 170 miles an hour with oil on your windshield. Man, I tell you how bad it gets. See Biffle fighting it right there, a little bit loose, but it does make it difficult, especially as you get the, the sun out here. Makes it uh, awful difficult to, to see as you enter these corners, and especially as you get closer to these race cars and have to pass them. Dave? Yeah, good call on the loose. That is the condition of the car right now for Biffle. And, you know, it didn't solve the problem by getting around the 11, did it? That windshield is still covered with oil. Yeah, he'd love to be able to reach out there and pull one of those tear offs off that windshield, but he can't do that. Have to wait for a pit stop to to make it better for him. It just makes it difficult as you get around cars and you're trying to judge and as you judge against them and like coming to, uh, up against the walls. We oh. see the 17 and just passing David Rudiman who gets a little bit loose coming up out of turn four himself. Looks like a lot of these cars have gone to the loose side, Andy. Almost every time we show a car there, you see the back end stepping out. Jimmy Johnson is really hanging in there real well. I mean, he's leading the race on these tires that are a lot older than these guys. The only problem he has is his amount of fuel in his tank. What's going on with 48, Mike? Well, you know, it's tough to really try to figure out what the strategy is all about. Alan talked about the gamble, but it might have been a gamble worth taking. Prior to that last round of pit stops, Jimmy was very unhappy with the car, saying it was absolutely horrible on short runs, a little bit better on long runs as he gained grip. They may have been experimenting to see exactly how this car reacted in clean air, but their time is running out. They just radioed together and said they will be stopping within the next 15 laps. Yeah, they're hoping they'll get a caution in these next 15 laps, or it's really going to cost him because these other guys can run a good, you know, 20, 25, 30 laps farther. We are being told that he should be on pit road within 10 laps. Now, Jimmy Johnson was a factor all during the 2007 season, but here in 2008, it's been all about the late season surge. We were onto the right things, I think, in the first Michigan race and building some strength. And now we have our stuff where we want it. We know what we need for a flat mile, banked mile, uh, banked big track, flat big track. So we're, we've just been putting it together over the course of the year and, and now we're ready and uh, we're going to great racetracks for us. This has been a very good racetrack for Jimmy Johnson. Three time winner here leading now but he's going to need some help from a yellow flag in the next eight or ten laps or this could be a very costly maneuver not coming on the pit road on lap 189 when the yellow is out and all the other leaders pitted back with more in just a moment. 